next week marks the one-year anniversary of your IndyCar win in Japan, which was a huge moment for you, yeah. a huge moment for women in general. <laughs> and Thanks. do you feel like that really solidified your standing in the racing world? You know, I think that for the people on the inside, other drivers, um, you know, the people that work closely, um, and maybe even the people that pay attention very closely outside um, of being in the sport, um, I don't think it really maybe solidified it for them, but it's very easy to recognize first place, a victory, a win. You mm -hmm. know, that's easy for, you know, the general public to understand. So right. I think that maybe if there was some fair weather people, maybe it was one of those things that they were like, all right, well, she's won a race now. You are definitely the face of IndyCar racing, but you still have some critics out there. How do you deal with the criticism that they toss your way? I think that everybody deals with a little criticism here and there in every kind of job, really. I mean, you, nobody's perfect. You just can't take anything too seriously, and you can't set, set your intention to please everyone. Um, that really isn't possible. And um, I, I find more, I take more pride in just being myself all the time. Now, Michael Andretti, your team owner, is your strategist. That's right. Does he have a game plan for you? Oh, the game plan changes lap by lap, weekend <laughs> by weekend, I think. It depends on what's going on. And he definitely has a, a unique perspective of experience being a you know a dry an ex driver that has right. driven and you know done so well. But our plan is always to win. Your contract is coming up with Andretti Green. Is there a chance that maybe you'll be going from open wheel to NASCAR? I think there's a chance of anything. I'm, I'm leaving my options very open, and um, as I did the last time my contract came around, it was about evaluating what was best for me as a person and a driver, mm -hmm. um, and for my lifestyle, as well as for, you know, just what my heart wanted to do. And right. um, I also have to look out for other things like, you know, my business and my brand sure. and my company. And so there's a lot of things to evaluate when it comes down to it. You have some, had some pretty famous on, uh, on track spats with people. And the interesting thing is when male athletes argue, they're considered really tough. And when female athletes argue, they're considered difficult. And that just seems like kind of a double standard. I would agree that double standards still exist in this, uh, in this culture in general. Being in my position and being looked at, you know, closely and often. Um, and as well as being a role model, you know, I want to do the right thing. And so I did learn from what happened last year with a couple of different things. Now, women love the fact that you race. Men like it a lot, too. What men really love is when you are in your bikini, you've <laughs> appeared in sports. Illustrated and you've posed on cars in your bikini. How is that transition? Are you getting more comfortable doing that? Um, it is fun. It is fun. It realistically, it's a lot of hard work, a lot working out and diet. And um, what an honor to be in the swimsuit issue for Sports Illustrated a couple of years in a row. Um, those women are so beautiful and so, uh, you know, so I, I love to pretend to be a model for a day. I'm going to be on the cover of Shape, um, and really? I think it comes out in like a week or something. So yeah, that was one of my other swimsuit. Um, challenges of the uh, of the winter you being on the cover of shape is going to make it a little easier for our male viewers to pick up shape magazine and not feel um uncomfortable about sure, it sure that's right exactly because i'm uh, i'm sure there'll be something about racing in there now you're here at the long beach grand prix you've never raced indycar here but you did do the celebrity race in 02 right. and rumor has it you had a pretty unusual bet then that you won <laughs> tell me about how that. how funny right this can come back that lasted a long time after we did that in 2002 but um the it was a bet that i made with uh with another driver tommy kendall whoever beat whoever got to lead the other person down pit lane on race day by a leash and a collar wow so um he was a real trooper about it and uh uh, I did walk him down pit lane with a leash and a collar. Wow, I hope you have photos of that. I'm sure there's some footage somewhere of that. I would, maybe that might even surface this weekend again. <laughs> now, what's next for Danica Patrick? Oh, well, you know, the season's just getting going. So, I mean, really, it's about um, it's about focusing there and, and, um, and working hard on the track and, you know, doing your homework at home. Um, it's, uh, you know, we've got Indy coming up, so um, we're kind of in the process of getting that plan together. Um, I think I'm going to go to the Kentucky Derby this year. Great. Um, but then uh, then the work begins that uh, for, the, for the biggest race of the year. So right now it's about settling in and getting everyone in place and feeling good where they're at and um, gaining some confidence and momentum so that we can uh, kick some butt in Indy.